SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we've got updates here from Crown Castle, and I think uh, what we're getting out of this these disclosures from the company and the writer, Sumeric, uh, I'll be sure to link the article for you guys. It'll be in the description. Uh, but I think what this does, it kind of tells us what's coming down the pipeline in 2024. And I think I know which networks are probably going to benefit most from this. All right, I, 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 just let me think a lot a little bit, and then you guys can tell me if you agree or if you disagree. Okay, so the, the article will be linked in the description and ways to support us uh, and all the content here on the channel. Show your appreciation. Those links are in the description as well. All right, so Crown Castle said that it's going to accelerate the small cell pace in 2024. For those of you that don't know what a small cell is, these are basically uh, mini cell sites uh, that are located usually on small like utility poles. Uh, typically, those poles, you know, provide a you know like a string connection of you know whatever power cables or fiber optic circuits or whatever the case may be. You know, utilities. And uh, they make for ideal locations to just add antennas and radios. All right? And basically what carriers can do is they can provide additional capacity in heavy usage areas, or they could fill in coverage gaps, uh, weak service areas with these antennas and radios, and they can enhance the coverage and reliability of networks. Right, Splitting cells allows to alleviate congestion off of macro sites as well. Right, So lots of reasons a company would want to use small cells. Now, up to this point, Verizon has been the company that has relied on the small cell solution the most. They have been fearlessly deploying them for years, dating back to like 2015, you know, and it's been quiet for the last couple of years. The small cell build did have a lull. You know, according to Crown Castle, they said that the um, number of small cells for 2024 is going to exceed uh, 14,000 nodes. Uh, and, and that's, you know, that's probably some, a mixture of millimeter wave and all the other traditional frequencies, including, you know, your mid-band 5Gs of the world, you know, your LTE upgrades as well. Uh, but they are, they, they, they're going to meet the plan goal of 10,000 small cells in 2023, and they're going to accelerate it to 14,000 next year. Now, when it comes to small cells, the company that comes to mind is Verizon. And Verizon has a very, very good, strong foundational relationship with Crown Castle. I'm going to assume that a majority of those small cells are going to be for Verizon. Uh, so whether it's new construction or it's going to be upgrades, you know, if it's if it's a site that's owned by Crown, if it's a site that is, you know, uh, assembled and built by Crown, but owned and operated by Verizon, that relationship is very strong. Uh, you know, Crown even has fiber. You know, these these types of things with respect to the relationship within the business is very good for them. at and probably is going to have a smaller piece of that. And I think maybe some of the action will go to T-Mobile. I, I just, I wouldn't count on it. You know, they're relaxing CapEx and, you know, they want to pay dividends and they, they, they want to do share buybacks. I, I don't know, you know, what that means for their small sale build. Maybe in their top 10 markets or something like that. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be doing that much. Right, maybe 2025. I'm not. I'm just looking. I'm. I'm trying to, you know, piece together what they've been saying and what they've been doing. Right. So that that's kind of my my take on it. I think most of these are going to be Verizon. All right. Now, Crown Castle does own and operate 115,000 small cells. They've got that many on air right now, and with a growth of 13% next year, you know, you can expect that small cell number, you know, to continue to increase over the years as companies decide they need them more and will rely on them more and densify their networks and of course Verizon continuing with the millimeter wave build Crown Castle will have a big hand in this so this is a a, a good network update if it, and and let's be honest here the 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 macro build out for the midband 5G by the end of next year Verizon will be mostly done like 90 95% done probably right the rest will be densification efforts and fill-ins but a bulk of the network will be upgraded and modernized, and it's basically going to be a return to focus of small cells, densification and capacity and cell splits. You know, and, and nobody does it like them when it comes to this type of a networking solution. And Crown Castle is a big piece of that. AT&T will get in a little bit, I'm sure. We have to wait and see what T-Mobile is going to do. I'm hoping T-Mobile, you know, does learn to take the small cell seriously. You know, I know they got all these other things they want to do. They're charging customers more money. 
They got a hundred dollar smartphone cell plan now, right? They they really should be looking into deepening their relationship with Crown as well. We'll see how it plays out. What are your predictions, guys? Who do you think is going to be the substantial builder through Crown Castle with these small cells? Now that the macros are upgraded, it's going to be all about cell splits, small cells, and 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 millimeter wave. Right here we go, guys. Kind of like phase two of the 5G networking build. Love to hear what you have to say on this. You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.